Hello and welcome back to Go Fund Yourself. Today we're gonna have a look at Palantir, what kind of products they're offering as well, if they are the next tech giant growing up. Hello, I'm Andrew and I'm not financial advisor, so please do your own due diligence before investing into any stock. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please press that subscribe button now. The name Palantir comes from Lord of the Rings books, as well as from the best film trilogy ever made. Palantiri, also known as Seeing Stones, the Seven Stones or the Seven Seeing Stones, are spherical objects used for communication in Middle Earth. And that is already enough for me to invest into this company as I'm a massive fan of Tolkien books. But let's get serious for a little bit. I think Palantir is one of the most misunderstood stocks in the stock market at this moment. So what does Palantir do and how they make their money? Palantir is known for their work with CIA, FBI, NSA, Department of Defense and ICE. In recent years, they started expanding from serving governments and their agencies, and now they're helping out big companies to deal with their data. A lot of their clients have a huge amounts of data that needs to be analyzed, and they have questions that needs to be answered. Palantir goes in with a small team and deploys a custom tailored product to centralize that data, organize and then connect it all. The customer has an easy way to access this data, analyze it and answer the questions in real time. Palantir in summary creates, installs, manages and maintains software for companies with large data sets. That helps connect the dots for the company's ever expanding data stream. At the moment the company has three products in the market, its Foundry, Apollo and Gotham. We will have a look at the videos for each product and how the product works and what it does. Let's have a look at Foundry first. We believe Foundry is the central decision support infrastructure for any organization. We built a software framework that translates data and models into knowledge that human operators can use to make better decisions. The Foundry ontology and simulation engine we are demoing today represent this connective tissue between assets in the digital world and actual decisions in the real world. Let's look at what this means for a large supply chain. As we built Foundry, we quickly learned that the amount of data in any organization is constantly increasing, creating a massive amount of entropy. For example, in a single supply chain project, like the one you see in front of you, you might need to ingest thousands of tables from a single ERP system alone. And in data from other systems, like operations, customer demand, and finance, and you quickly realize that it's extremely difficult to understand or discover anything from the data, even with all of it in one place. This is why companies spend years on data projects without any clear business outcomes. We determined pretty quickly that we needed to take a different approach. Palantir Foundry's ontology and simulation engine technology is our unique solution to this challenge. It preserves granular data governance and security while mapping all data into a shared, easily understood framework specific to the organization. This ontology, the representation or the digital twin of an organization, provides a common interface for all downstream workflows, from search and analysis to operational applications like supply chain optimization. It is also a two-way interface between an organization's digital assets and its real-world operations, allowing teams to feed their unique insights back into a common understanding of the business. Let's take a manufacturing plant as a first example. To create a 360 degree view of the plant, we are joining massive amounts of data, like sensor data from plant operations, or logistics data from distribution centers, or financial data from ERP systems to create the plant object. As we continue to integrate data to support more and more use cases, our ontology continues to grow. We also link the plant to key entities like distribution centers, customers, and raw materials, which are backed by even more data sources. The result of this data integration and mapping work is immediate transparency into the business objects, that plant, for business users across the organization. As a supply chain manager, a logistics officer, or a plant operations manager, I can see all the data that has been integrated to develop that plant object. And for any single plant, I can quickly see the most relevant KPIs to understand customers and distribution centers by city, as well as any demand alerts and the demand in production over time. 
Looks like Foundry software can be used in any situation depending on the data provided by the company. No code interface provides an easy customizable dashboard to any situation that a company faces. The best part about this software is that it can be used with real-time data coming from different users, different departments to make real-time decisions. What's most exciting is that this framework is bi-directional. All user insights and decisions are recorded in the ontology where they become immediately available as data for others to build on. This enables unparalleled cross-functional collaboration. For example, imagine a supply chain analyst discovers excess inventory of a particular raw material that will expire in a few months. They can flag this as an opportunity, notify a customer account manager, and from there identify potential sales opportunities for those finished goods. Saving goods, raw materials, and working at such speed will already save millions of dollars for the companies. We'll have another look at the key element of this presentation and another way the companies save money. Foundry's ontology is the connective tissue. By mapping models to that ontology, we create a system-wide simulation engine that powers what-if analyses that were previously impossible. Users at every level of the organization, from strategic to operational, can understand the potential outcomes and side effects of a decision before they execute on that decision. What this creates is an extremely powerful infrastructure that enables organizations to treat their operations like code. Changes can be staged and tested before they are applied. For example, in our supply chain control tower, production and pricing models leverage data from raw materials and plant capacity. It puts out production volume and customer demand estimates based on price changes. This type of model is often used by a supply chain manager to decide how much of a given refined product to make from a bath of raw materials. We can then chain a model like this with a seasonal demand model to dynamically optimize the product catalog and increase revenue. This basically allows companies to understand cause and effect within their company and the consequence their company would face before the decision is made. The possibilities of Foundry seems to be endless. It all depends on how you apply the software to your needs, which is done by end user client. The next product we will have a look at is Gotham. It's used by counter-terrorist analysts at the offices in United States intelligence community, as well as Department of Defense. We will have a look at their presentation video for this software. The new Gotham launch helps commanders quickly understand not only the choices available to them, but the second and third order costs of those choices. It's a game changer and applies to every business in the world. In many ways, this is the most important problem of our time and critical to our nation's prosperity and our way of life. At Palantir, we've got our best engineers working to take every sensor, data feed and database out there and integrating them together to give leaders across echelons a holistic view of their world and allowing them to optimize their split-second decision-making.
This software is used mainly for defense and intelligence sectors by the government. It's end-to-end -end operating system that can collect data from millions of different sources and put it on one platform so the users can access this data and manage their operations clearly. Coham is quickly becoming main data solution across a lot of federal agencies. As well, there is a very interesting rumor going around about the software that it helped to catch Osama bin Laden in 2011, but that has to be taken with a pinch of salt because we don't know for sure if this software had anything to do with it. I think Gotham will bring more and more revenue slowly with time. Next on the list, Apollo. So while the vast majority of our customers are able to take advantage of our public cloud SaaS, these real world constraints mean that many of our customers are unable to do so. Apollo is the silent third platform that sits behind both Foundry and Gotham. It is what allows us to meet our customers where they are, to power their missions and solve their most important problems, no matter where in the world these are. Apollo manages the end-to-end -end set of software platform considerations, from our developers' keyboards all the way to our customers at the front line. At the core of Apollo is an end-to-end, -end, highly extensible framework for continuous delivery in all environments. It provides an autonomous control plane for the continuous delivery of standard new product features, security updates, and platform configurations. Apollo's flexibility enables our SaaS platform to support the requirements of the world's most risk-averse and most mission-critical systems today. You can see some examples here listed of these systems. Suffice it to say, they need the latest technology and they also need it without risk of downtime. Apollo is able to deliver. Our SaaS is authorized to be used for mission-critical national security systems by the U.S. Department of Defense. This authorization is the most stringent for unclassified data, and you can count the number of other SaaS systems who have this accreditation on one hand. We are committed to continuing to support the world's most important institutions by ensuring that SaaS-like efficiency, coupled with reliable stability and top-notch security, are our top priorities. Apollo is the last piece of the puzzle from Palantir, and you can think of it as underlying structure below Gotham and Foundry. It is what will allow Palantir to massively scale their business. We are defining what it means to be a SaaS in the classified space. We're moving from a world of slow and minimal upgrades with static software that quickly gets out of date to a world where the benefits of SaaS can be realized in the classified world as well. We will solidify this position by becoming the first SaaS authorized for the U.S. Department of Defense Impact Level 6, enabling us to scale even more quickly across secret networks. It is about to provide feature delivery, security updates, as well as configurations, no matter where in the world they are and no matter what device, such as drones, tanks, planes, etc. Apollo basically turned Palantir into a SaaS company that provides efficiency, reliability, security, and scalability. Also, Apollo supports multi-cloud capabilities where you can move your public data from such clouds as Google Cloud or AVS to and from private cloud, to and from hybrid cloud, and to and from classified environment seamlessly. Apollo also takes our platforms to places where no SaaS has gone before, to challenging physical conditions, war zones, remote deserts, across oceans, to places with delayed, disconnected, intermittent, or low bandwidth environments, places where network cables do not exist, to mobile and ruggedized places, Humvees, subs, downrange data centers. These are all places where customers historically have only had access to legacy, static, custom-built systems. But we've changed the game by bringing the same powerful software available in industry to these challenging environments, providing them with our platforms, platforms that are always cutting edge and always up to date. Also, Apollo allows Palantir to go where no SaaS went before, because it's still able to provide SaaS-like features in challenging environments or low bandwidth environments, such as submarines. Finally, I can say that I understand why KT Wood invested so much money on Palantir after learning of their products. I think Palantir is going to do very well in the future, considering that they are already solving issues and problems that the other companies haven't even started to. And the latest news about Palantir is that they recently have a partnership with AVS, which is probably going to give them quite a lot of profit as well. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new today. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe and comment below. Have a lovely day.